Um, at the back end of 2013, um, the FCA started an investigation into price comparison websites. They involved 14 price comparison websites in this study, um, and those 14 were chosen because combined they were responsible for 95% of the insurance policy sales that had gone through that channel. So you can bet your bottom dollar that all of the big comparison sites that you know and can see in the theme tune for would probably be included um, in that investigation. Now, the industry had been making a lot of noise about price comparison websites. Um, so some people were surprised that it did actually take the FCA so long to, uh, to get around to investigating them. But they did. And some of the findings in that report are really interesting. Um, and if, if any of the people in this room, if, if you come across um, customers who say, oh, I just go online, I get it cheaper online, um, and, and that old line that, that we hear quite a lot, there's some stuff in this report that you might find quite useful um, just to try and rebut um, some of those things you hear from your clients. Now, the main criticism uh, of the FCA, uh, from the FCA, of the price comparison websites, if I could put it into a broad, um, under a broad umbrella, it was mostly about the fact that they don't present information in a way that helps customers make clear decisions. Um, they found that a lot of the time the information was presented in a way which would mislead customers um, or in some instances, they, they obscured certain information. One of the simple examples that was highlighted in the report is um, on many of the websites, when customers click, clicked on a, an I button for, for more information, often um, there would be a pop-up that says, check your policy document or check with the insurer. Now that's obviously no use if you're going through a data capture stage to get a quote and it's telling you to check a policy document, because of course you haven't got one by that stage. So that's how useful that kind of thing is. So the key things that the FCA um, found um, price comparison websites fall in short uh, in were the main features of the product, um, including the cover levels and the excess, the main exclusions and limitations of the policy, and the cost of any additional fees. I'm not sure about you, but I think these are pretty important pieces of information to be getting wrong. One of the tricks that many of the price comparison websites use around voluntary access is effectively they ignore it. So when you're a customer um, and you're asked to choose a voluntary access when you're going through the data capture stages, um, I think it's reasonable to assume that the quotes that come up in the results stage would be quotes that include the amount of voluntary access that you've chosen. That's simply not the case on many of these sites. Um, there were instances where you know clients would put in a voluntary access of £150, but the cheapest quotes came up, but they had an excess of £750, £1,000, stuff that bore no resemblance um, to the information that they'd, um, they'd requested. Um, and on a lot of these websites, because of the way they present the information, they don't highlight that the excess is different. Um, so if you just the type of customer that just clicks through thinking, well, of course, this has got to be right. You might be in for a nasty surprise when it comes to a claim and you find out instead of £150 excess, you've got a £1,000 excess. Quite a difference there. Um, one of the other things around voluntary access, um, which was uh, quite worrying, was uh, the FCA highlighted the way that certain websites display certain information about stuff like voluntary access also doesn't help the clients. Voluntary access is quite a jargony thing if you're not used to dealing with insurance. Um, and the FCA found in the, the, the consumer study group that they used, 
um, that many of the consumers, because of the way that the term voluntary access was presented, many consumers thought that it was actually the amount that the insurer would give them back in the event of a claim. One of the other things that the price comparison websites got wrong was the use of red crosses and green ticks. Um, now, as you'd imagine, a green tick um, would normally indicate that a feature or a benefit is included in the policy. A red cross would indicate that it's not. Um, the FCA found that many of the price comparison websites were using these incorrectly. Um, and there were many occasions that they found where there was a green tick on the results screen indicating that, let's say, extended accidental damage was included in the policy. But when you click through to the insurer's site or click through to buy uh, the policy, it actually wasn't included or it was available but for an extra premium, which means by the time you get to actually part with your money, the premium is very different from the premium that you've uh, clicked through to try and buy. So overall, um, the FCA found that the way that this information was presented was likely to lead to a lot of customer confusion. Um, and I wouldn't mind betting that there's already quite a lot of customers who found themselves um, stung by purchasing a policy that's maybe not appropriate for their needs, or they've had a claim and they've ended up paying a much, much higher access than they anticipated. And I suspect that those clients are desperate um, to go back to a broker where they know they're going to be taken care of, where they know that what they want is going to be taken into account in the policy that they're provided with. So some of the things that came out of the um, price comparison website study, which I thought would be interesting um, for you to know, um, and again, it follows a theme around obscuring information or not making um, information clear. So one of the things the FCA found is that the role of price comparison websites wasn't made clear to consumers. So many consumers thought that the results would be tailored towards their needs and their preferences. Um, and as we've already seen with the example using um, voluntary accesses, that's plainly not the case. They, they will tend to look at the property and throw up the cheapest um, results from that and almost disregard some of the, um, the customer's preferences. Um, one of the other things was um, they found that the way that price comparisons websites were remunerated was not made clear to clients. So uh, many of them used to use phrases like, it's free to use our service. Um, or it costs you nothing to use our service. And again, that's not true in a capitalist society. We know that nothing's free. We know that the consumer pays for it somewhere. Um, and the comparison websites tend to obscure how the clients pay for it. And the third uh, thing that was actually the most worrying um, for most of the consumers in the consumer group was that most of the price comparison websites tended to make it difficult to find out about their ownership structures. Um, and that is, um, you know, it, it, it's quite interesting to note that most of the price comparison websites are actually owned by insurers or by broker groups, which in, include insurers. Now, the, the reason why this was a concern for people in the consumer groups was because they thought that that might bias um, the results that came out um, clearly, you know, if, if a price comparison website is owned by an insurer, you might expect that a policy that's underwritten by that insurer to come cheapest most of the time. So, for example, would your clients know that Go Compare was 50% uh, owned by Eshore Limited? Or that Confused.com was wholly owned by Admiral? or that Compare the Market was owned by Budget Insurance, who own a whole host of uh, different brands. Um, so again, if you make your clients aware of this, they may not think that the price comparison websites are these independent knights in shining armour um, 
that, that some people think they are. One of the other areas that the FCA um, criticised the price comparison websites um, for was in the use of due diligence. Um, so many of the price comparison websites didn't carry out any due diligence on the insurers um, on their panel at all. Um, and those that did often only carried it out when they first joined the panel. So if you can imagine a situation, if you're not if you're not carrying out due diligence on your insurers that are on your panel, how do you know that they're still trading? How do you know they're still active? Is it possible that you could be selling insurance policies um, when an insurer has stopped trading? It's quite likely if you're not carrying out regular due diligence. Um, this bit wasn't in the FCA study. But while we're talking about price comparison websites, I thought it would be useful to include because um, normally when we've been presenting these around the country, there's always been one broker in the room who's been affected uh, by this. Um, in the small print, you need to dig quite deep to find it on most of the comparison websites. So these are just um, taken from the big four. Um, all of them say that some of our product and service providers will carry out a credit reference search in order to provide you with a quote. Now, bear in mind it says product and service <coughs> providers, not they the website. Now what that means is when you go on to a price comparison website um, to get a general insurance quote, if you get 30 quote results, that could mean 30 credit reference search. As I say, there's always been one broker in the room, at least one broker in the room, when we've been presenting um, this around the country. So I'll just give you a, a couple of examples as well. Just give you a couple of examples that I've heard, and then perhaps you, you could share your example as well. Um, so one broker um, was at completion stage. Um, the lender was just doing the final pre-completion um, checks, and this lender in particular did another credit reference search um, just before releasing the money. Um, the, the client failed the credit reference search and the lender withdrew the offer. When the broker went back to the um, client to find out why he failed the credit reference search, it turns out the client had something like 70 credit mm -hmm. reference searches that had um, been done in his name um, just over, over one weekend. So the lender thought Now, these are soft credit searches, uh, for those that want to know, um, but it's a myth that soft credit searches don't affect your credit score, because different lenders approach credit reference searches in different ways. There are some lenders that I've been told that definitely do take soft credit reference searches into account, particularly if there's a, a large number of them. As I said earlier, I think the tide is turning. Um, there's been quite a few stories in the news um, over this last 12 months that if you, um, if you look for them, um, it just tends to show you how hard it's getting for the price comparison websites. They can't run riot anymore uh, as they used to. So the most favoured nation clause. Now this was a clause um, that many comparison websites used to use um, when they first came out to say, won't find our insurance any cheaper anywhere else. Now contractually that was true, because what a most favoured nation clause was, was it contractually obliged clients to offer, um, sorry, insurers not to be able to offer the same quote through that channel any cheaper anywhere else. Um, so they were found to be anti-competitive. Um, so they were banned in the middle of last year. Um, Tesco Compare, so Tesco in 2014, one of the biggest retail brands in the UK, 
Um, they launched their comparison site with much fanfare and then quietly closed it um, on the 29th of August, I think, 2014, because they couldn't make it work. Um, and beat that, that quote, um, owned by Google, one of the biggest retail brands um, in the world. Um, obviously, they control a lot of search engine traffic. You'd expect beat that, that quote to come up fairly close to the top um, when anybody puts, you know, home insurance comparison or something like that into the search engine. Um, but after, uh, in their first year of trading, 9.4 million loss. So Google is struggling to make that model work for them as well. Now, with all of these findings coming out of the FCA report and some of the um, examples we've seen about credit score and stuff, it, it's surprising that not more has been made of this in the media. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's clear that, um, you know, you need to talk to your clients about it because otherwise they probably won't find out about this. Um, in order to help you out, there's some handouts at the front, which is effectively a summary of, of this presentation. Please feel free to either come and see me or come and help yourself um, after this is finished. Um, and also I've got a client-facing version of that document that I prepared. If any of you communicate with your clients via email or newsletters or anything like that and you would find that useful to have, um, please come and see me afterwards and I'll email that to you um, when I get back to the office and you can copy and paste uh, and do what you like with that. Um, this was in the news when I was reading the Sunday papers um, a couple of months ago. Um, so, as I said, shortly after they were asked to take their home insurance comparison adverse off, off the air, um, a lot of them jumped into promoting their energy switching services. Now, I believe a question about this was raised in the House of Parliament shortly after this story broke as well, but um, comparison sites have been accused of not always showing the cheapest deal available to clients when they go on to um, switch their energy. Now, what relevance has that got to me, I hear you ask? Well, this is just, again, it's another example of where um, price comparison websites are not these white knights, these kind of saviors of consumers that they're always cracked out to be. They're, they're in it to make a profit um, like anyone else. Um, and I think these kinds of stories, they do just put pressure um, on that market. Um, and if your client is thinking, um, you know, oh, maybe I should go online because I'm sure they'll treat me well. These are the kinds of um, stories that are out there. That, you know, that this is not kind of anything confidential. This was in um, one of the major Sunday newspapers a couple of months ago. You can use this information um, to persuade your clients that actually you're a safer pair of hands for their GI than a price comparison website.